Welcome back, everybody. It's another episode of Bobby J on 30A. I'm your co-host, Chris Angel, here with your host, Bobby Johnson, as always. Hello, Bobby Johnson. How are you, Chris? Good, Welcome. How are you? Hey, I'm good. You're outside today. I like it. I like. Yeah, I am. I'm, I'm trying to. I'm even standing though. Look at this. I'm, I'm, and the Hi. reason I'm standing right now is we have a special guest who would like to see me standing. So I said, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> and it's funny. Guess what? He's sitting. So I think that's pretty ironic. Are yeah. you? But uh, and I, so that's perfect. Bart, hello, Bart. Welcome to Bobby J on Thirty A. How are you today? I'm awesome. Thanks. Thanks for having me, Chris. Nice to meet you today. And of course, yeah. Bobby J is in the house. I'm Bobby J is in the house. I'm in. I'm feeling good and. Um, I want, you know, coming back from a little trip uh, of some wellness and health, I wanted yeah, to make man. sure that we, we got Bart in and, and uh, helped me with a topic that I'm really struggling with. Um, this sugar, uh, sugar, what is it? The good, the bad, the ugly? Yeah, the good, the bad, um, the ugly. I'm starting to get around people that are starting to confuse good sugar with bad sugar and, and uh, a little bit about the history that I've had with Bart. Um, I, I get what, what is the saying? The Humpty Dumpty put us back together again. Uh, I'm the Humpty Dumpty, I guess, right? And I fall off a lot of walls. And but on another level, you know, Bart has um, and and his wife Kelly have uh, they have a studio in Great and or excuse me in Seagrove Beach called Balance Health Studios, and they have helped put my family back together again multiple times. Not just from the physical, but the mental place. They you know they've helped my daughter Kelsey. Uh, my wife, uh, they, they brought her under her wing and she's now a yoga instructor under Kelly. Kelly's like her, what do they call that? The queen or what is Kelly to, to, to Beverly bar? What would that be called? Probably the queen. I think the that's queen, right. yeah. something like that. Yeah, and, something like that. And, and, and in a, in a time when Beverly had gone through multiple, you know, deaths and, and she jumped into this yoga training with them and it just, it really changed a lot, which in, in turn, I'm just constantly getting pieced back together by them. So that's a given, but the beauty of, of my relationship with the pre-courts is that my whole home and my dynamic of my home has, has changed. I mean, we went from this people out of control running around to there's more peace here. And I, I think that that part of the wellness part is, is the is the most incredible part um, and I don't know how you ever thank somebody enough for that, but I think that, you know, Bart's found his passion. So I came back from this journey with this sugar thing where I'm like, what is it? I don't know, you know, and people tell me not to eat fruit. People tell me to eat it. Oh, you can only get 30 grams. So I'm bringing the expert in. Yeah. He's going to help fix this conversation for me. So Bart, help. Bart, yeah. what? Hey Bart, let me ask first too. Are you what, is, what kind of doctor are you? Like, what's what's your background so that people listening can kind of get a sense of what kind yeah, of doctor so, you are? So I, I wear many hats, Chris. So I'm a doctor of chiropractic, uh, I'm also an acupuncturist, hmm. clinical nutritionist. I practice functional medicine. I'm a kinesiologist. So a kind of a lot of hats. Uh, yeah. I maybe mean, just think of it as uh, you know a natural doctor, a holistic doctor. Hmm. Got it. Uh, I love it. So an what amazing is chiropractor too, by the way. What is the scoop on sugar? I mean, what my you know, six years ago I started working out, and uh, you know when you start down a journey, you start reading all sorts of stuff. So I'd read books and blogs and listen to podcasts and watch videos, and and you know it's exciting in the beginning. Everything's like, oh, look at all this stuff. But pretty soon you start to see like there's conflicting advice. People are like, butter's good, no butter's bad, right? Yeah. You should have yeah. fat, no, you shouldn't have fat. And now we're we're talking about sugar, so you know like. Drop some truth bombs on sugar. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to drop some truth bombs. And we're <laughs> going to do it in two ways. So one, we'll talk about like why, why sugar got such a bad rap. I want to define that and, and understand what is it that's going on in our bodies that sugar's wreaking havoc on. Like what is it doing to our heart and all that kind of stuff. And, but at the same time, I think Chris and Bobby, we got to simplify things. We got to back up a step and get back to basics first before we just start – like picking things out and start saying no more sugar, no more alcohol, no more this, no more that. I'm going vegan. I'm going keto. I'm going paleo. Before <laughs> we just start eliminating stuff, we have to have a foundation we got to start with. So I'll, I'll limit, if, if it's cool, I'm going to start right there. Yeah. And I'm going to dumb it down. I, I feel as though I am part of the reason there's so much confusion in, in nutrition because I'm a nutritionist. Mm. So I feel like all of us that have all this information – are part of the reason that everyone's massively confused. 
So I, I'm kind of guilty in that, but at the same time, I'm gonna simplify it. I'm gonna make it so simple that you're gonna go, no, it's gotta be more complicated than that, but it's not. So here's, here's the simple, if you're looking for a foundation, what is the right way to eat? And Bob, you've heard me say this before, we just get back to God's garden. And when I say God's garden, it goes like this. If, it's, if it comes from a root, a plant, a tree, if it walks in the garden or swims in the sea, we eat it. That's the premise. That being said, if it's in a box or in a bag or it's got a label, that's probably a food we should keep out of our, out of our body. Hmm. Simple enough, right? Yep. Things have changed. So nowadays we have, we can go into the store and we can buy, you know, fruit juices. We can buy apple juice and orange juice and all this kind of stuff. So we're kind of manipulating the foods a little bit. So let's just say that's the foundation of good nutrition. You guys on board with that? Yep. God's got confusion. Anyone's confused. I'm Anybody not confused. Body? No, I'm, I'm loving it. Loving it. Loving it. All right, sweet. So, and I say that because, you know, when I go to the schools and I teach this to the kids, mm -hmm. they get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they, real simply, and I make them get a little rhyme. If it comes from a root, a plant, a tree, walks in the garden, swims in the sea, we eat it. But if we do that as a foundation and stop making things bad or good, then we got to flip it over to, and we almost got to get down to the, like, what is my why? Like, why do I want to eat a certain way? What is my ultimate goal? What am I trying to achieve with my body? But before we even go there, let's talk sugar for just a second here. So the challenge with sugar is this, is that sugar creates inflammation. Mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. Inflammation is really kind of the root of all in, in like bad stuff inside the body. But I'm not talking about the inflammation you get like when you sprain your elbow. Talk about the inflammation you get on the inside of the body, systemic inflammation. Hmm. So that's just the beginning of it. Mm -hmm. The second part of inflammation is that anytime we take sugar in, whether I'm taking a Snickers bar or an apple, hmm. if I eat this, it comes in in a certain amount of volume, I raise my blood sugar. The moment that happens, your body releases a hormone called insulin. Insulin is a fat storage hormone, and it also promotes inflammation hmm. so if our goal is to feel good physically and to be at our ideal weight hmm. then we gotta think well how do i we gotta look at what we're putting in our body because if you put in things that cause insulin to go up then you're going to be causing inflammation and more weight gain yeah yeah how long does inflammation stay in the body bart <clears throat> that's the million dollar question well that's the best question to be asking because now, if we look at sugar, so Bobby and I off air, we're, we're talking about, he's saying like, I got, you know, peeps thinking about, I can't eat an apple anymore. Right. Yeah. So, you know, and, and I think anyone that says, well, I can't eat an apple. What am I talking about? Like, that's ridiculous. Right. A an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Doctor away, you're right. So technically, so I'll go into two parts of that about why are, when we eat fruit from God's garden, why is that different than me eating like a, a Snickers bar. Why is that different? What is the difference? And then the volume of it. So the reason that we can do it is this, is that all fruit in nature, all of it, comes with something called fiber, okay? Mm -hmm. So why don't you just, just roll with me here. Mm -hmm. You eat an apple. Like how many apples can you eat before you're full? Like one, right? Oh, I've never tried that. Probably a lot. <laughs> well, oh, okay, sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know, 10, 20? <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I don't want to film you eating. Yeah. I don't so know here's, what the side, side effects are of that, but uh, anyway. Here's, here's the difference. Here, and this is kind of where, this is where we've kind of messed it up. We figure, well, apple juice is yummy. Mm. And literally in a 16-ounce bottle of apple juice, mm. it's like 10 apples. Right. You could never eat 10 apples yeah, yeah. because fiber, the way nature provides it, makes you feel full. But sugar does not. So if you're eating fruit like it was designed to be, Almost all of it always has fiber, and fiber is the balancing act. When we start doing the juices, we start doing the sugars, the cookies, the crackers, the, or anything for that matter that converts into sugar, there's nothing to slow it down. And that's the fiber, and that's the good fats. Mm, got it. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm tracking. I like yeah, that. So, 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 like, even like, okay, you know, Chris, who can eat 20 apples, um, but <laughs> <laughs> the average guy, I mean, like, you know, we have one apple, right? And then, you know, I, I think there's been times where I've thought about another apple, but it's not like a, like if I eat a Snicker bar, I kind of want another one, you know? And I, 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 now I could eat 20 Snicker bars, like, and not even think <laughs> twice about do. it, right? Yeah. yeah. But, but so an apple kind of, 
you know, I think maybe a little bit of the struggle for people sometimes with this type of thought is like, I eat an apple and I'm full, but I'm, you know, 20 minutes later, I'm not. And, and that, and then that they, you know, they, what does that play? I guess. Um, there's two things, about? there's two things that play here. So you're absolutely right. You, you got a bag of cookies in front of you. You have a cookie and you go, man, I shouldn't be eating these cookies. Right. <laughs> And then you find your hand reaching for it and you're saying to yourself, I shouldn't be eating these cookies. And you still, you grab the cookie and you eat it. Next thing you know, you've eaten like a half a roll of Oreo cookies. Dude. If you're lucky, right? Have you been to my I'm house? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Quit spying on me, Bart. Yeah. So you do that because there's two things. The blood is rushing, the sugar is rushing in. It sends a little signal to your brain. It sets off some serotonin release. Yeah. It makes you feel good, no doubt about it. And there's nothing putting the brakes on. That's the fiber. Got it. Yeah, yeah. That's what happens with an apple. And that's why if you do eat an apple, you actually feel full. Here's the challenge that we are all in right now. This is why things like keto are such um, a big topic right now. And quite frankly, I'm not even going to call it a fad. It's not going to go away because people are really getting amazing results with it. The yeah. reason that keto is so effective now is because we've all been in carbohydrate and sugar diets for decades. Mm -hmm. It's not like we just did that for a week. Mm -hmm. So we are right. so used to that pattern. Our bodies literally develop something called insulin resistance. Almost think of like sugar resistance. Wow. So a little bit doesn't do it anymore. You need to keep piling in because what goes up, goes down, goes up, goes down, goes up, go down. Yeah. I was going to ask, I want to ask a follow-up question on that because back to the, like how long does it stay in your body? I would imagine if we've had like, we've given our bodies no rest from, from sugar. And so we're in a constant state of inflammation um, I would imagine, like, is there a detox period? I don't know if that's the right word to call it, but is there like this period of like your body getting used to operating without this inflammation? Yeah. So there's, there's, if I'm following you, Chris, there's really to answer that question that you did ask me earlier, like how long to stay in our body. When you, if we go back to like, I really think how we used to use fruit, like when we grew up on the way to the ball field, we used to pass apple trees, literally. You pick an apple, you bite the apple and keep walking keep moving if you use fruit like the young kids out there like when we grew up on the sidelines it wasn't gatorades and everything there was apples and oranges orange slices I they were amazing because they had fiber and micronutrients they had all the electrolytes were already there and some water built in everything was perfect to restore the human body back to good function so when you're exercising you're going to be active fruit is fantastic mm -hmm. because you're going to burn it up instead of it Steel, sitting yeah. in your body does that make yeah. sense yeah. Mm -hmm. If you yep. have some apples and go boogie out, go to soccer practice, something fantastic. It's a great fuel for the body. Mm -hmm. Do you need the sugar? The answer is you don't. Because if you don't have it to your second part, what happens? If you run out of sugar, inevitably you're going to hit a little bit of a lull. And that lull is that's the, that's the cranky moment. That's the hangry. <laughs> yeah, okay? we, we've all been there. That's the moment where like you're like, you're hungry? Your, your, your wife asks you're hungry. You're like, no, I'm good. And five minutes later, you're like, I need some food now. Now. Or you're going to like kill someone or strangle them. <laughs> that right there, Chris, has nothing to do with actually being hungry. Hmm. That's actually a hormone imbalance. That's the insulin trying to say, give me more sugar. Give me more sugar. Hmm. And you don't give it. So then what does your body do? Hmm. And it looks for a secondary fuel source. Hmm. And it starts to burn your fat for fuel. Mm -hmm. And then you show you go down and you level right back out. Not a technical, what I described right there, that's what ketosis is. That's oh, what a ke that ketogenic is diet is. Awesome. But you got to fight yeah, through okay. that. And, and listen, so yeah, to yeah. maybe even go deeper to answering your question, how long? If I have a pre-diabetic pre in my clinic, someone who tells me they are addicted to sugar, hmm. two, three, four, five days, Chris. Hmm. That's all I'm talking about, of getting them off sugar, and they're going to be cranky for like two of those days. Yeah. Because the human body, all it wants to do is survive. Yeah, yeah, so it's yeah. not going to be like, go sit in a corner and, you know, starve itself to death. It's going to start using right. fat for fuel. Mm -hmm. So we can break that blood sugar pattern in days. And that's, that's probably as a practitioner, the most challenging thing I have to yeah. see all this diabetes, to see all this heart disease out there. Where it, 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 you know, it takes, it takes a little bit of a strategy, but more discipline than strategy. I was going to say that that doesn't seem as long as, as I would have thought maybe for somebody pre-diabetic, I would think it would take a lot longer, but it seems like the body's pretty good at bouncing back. If you give it a break. It is now give it a break. But that means Chris to like, so you give it a break, 
And then you're like, you won't feel the suffering, if you want to call it, of like the addiction to sugar. You'll break through that, but it doesn't mean you can go back to sugar. <laughs> right. you know I mean? Like, yeah. So we we still and are we are. Eating, are you eating fruit during that break or none? No, none at all. You're gonna want to slow it down because here's what happened, Bobby. This is why there's confusion about sugar about fruit. So listen, I, I'm gonna go on record and say this: fruit is good for humans. It is really good. It comes from God's garden. It is good for us. Wouldn't be here if it wasn't good for us. The challenge is we're sugar sensitive. That is the issue. We are sugar sensitive, meaning that we have taken on so much sugar for so many years Mm -hmm. that we're triggered. So we have a little bit of sugar and it blows us right back into that mode of your body is now feeding only off of sugar. But if you pull it out, so that being said, if you guys want me to give you like technicals today, if you kept under 70 grams of carbohydrates total, because they're all converted to sugar, mm-hmm. I don't care if it comes from food or not, but I'm going to give you a tip about the fruit that's awesome. Mm-hmm. So if you add up your bread, your banana, mm-hmm. your, your apple, your spaghetti, add all those up, total carbohydrates. For my diabetic patient, not even diabetic, all of us, pre-diabetic, we want to keep under that window. It's about 70 grams a day. Hmm. And, 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 I, and I don't even like people wanting to monitor, just having a general idea. Because, again, if you, if you stick to God's garden, yeah. it's going to be hard to break through that. Hmm. Here's, here's a cool thing, though. Sugar, so if you have your total carbohydrates of an apple, which I don't know what they are. I'm going to say that they're 30. I'll use a banana. I know these, I think I know these numbers a little better. A banana is about 25 grams of carbohydrates. Mm. If you take the fiber that is in the, any of your foods, you get to subtract it from those carbs because that's how much it slows down. So fiber slows down the effect of sugar. So when you have an apple with all that fiber, it reduces the impact of sugar. Mm -hmm. So Bobby, you mentioned apple earlier. Look up total carbohydrates of apple, subtract dietary fiber. So if that's 10 grams and you're, you know, if the, if the carbohydrates is 15 and the dietary fiber is 10, it's only a net of five. Got it. Okay. Does, does that make sense? So just do that math like and that. that's where you can see that. Like that. So you just subtract dietary fibers. So I don't even, I don't even have my patients look at sugar on the labels. I have them look at total carbohydrates, subtract the dietary fiber. That number is the one you want to talk about adding. Yeah. Sorry, let me write that down. Yeah, that's really good. That's a great tip. Hey, listen, all you in 30A, you heard, you heard it here first, right? You're going to go to the label, find total carbohydrates minus the dietary fiber, and that's your net, your net carb. Right, that's what you're yeah. calculating. So a, a, a smoothie could, I mean, you know, a lot of times I watch people make smoothies, and you could get in a little trouble there, huh? I yeah. Mean, as far as a lot of sugar, I've, I've obviously you see people throw apple juice in there, and um, yeah, and that's but, a huge one. It, you know, you know, we do our cleanses, and I, but we try to make our smoothies. So let me give you an example how it could be like in God's garden. You can eat a ton of food. Mm-hmm. A real food without ever getting near that number. So in my smoothie that my wife made me earlier today, huge wads of spinach. And here's the cool thing about spinach. If you take one of those big bu- buckets that you go over like Publix for, you can eat that entire, then now spinach is a carbohydrate, mm-hmm. okay? But you can eat that entire bucket of spinach and you'd probably be at about four grams of, wow. of total or net carbs. Wow. That makes sense? Yeah. Because wow. there's so much dietary fiber. So much good fiber and greens. So in your smoothie, if you have a handful of spinach, technically you'll probably be about one gram. Okay. Mm. The, the, the sneaky one is the banana. Because right. that could be, you put a whole banana in, you got 25 grams, boom, right there. Bam. But if you do a little bit of, of, of a banana, yeah. you do some blueberries, which are high in fiber. Again, your net is going to be down there. You do protein powder. You do collagen powder, perfectly fine. Cacao nibs makes it no, no carbohydrates. You take it, you're talking about a smoothie that you can have every single day. It's basically a keto smoothie, and it's completely full. Mm-hmm. Put coconut oil in there, avocado in there, and all of these wonderful things, but your net carbs minimal. The moment I change that, and it goes strawberries, blueberries, banana and it's more of a fruit smoothie boom, boom, boom. yeah 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 
right? Right, right, Which right. Which is typically why you, you know, I always, you know, why you get hungry 20 or 30 minutes after you eat a big sugary, I mean, a big fruit smoothie, right? I mean, I tend to go about, you know, an hour and I'll be like, gosh, I'm, I'm less hungry when I don't eat. Yeah. Here, I mean, I'm sure we can all agree that we've experienced that. And there's, 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 there's even two parts of that, Bobby. In the beginning, when you take out the sugars, remember your body's not fat adaptive. And that's what our goal is. Like we have to reteach our bodies how to burn fat for fuel. You should be able to turn it on and off, but we can't. We're just, we just literally kind of got like, remember those little mini bikes we used to ride when we were young? You had to switch to the reserve tank? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well imagine your tank being sugar and then you run out and you gotta switch it to the reserve and that's fat, okay? You should be able to do that like that. The challenge is, a lot of us can't. That little switch is rusty and you can't get it down there to burning fat. So now you're hungry because you don't learn how to burn fat for fuel. And so we want to be able to become fat adapted. So inevitably, you got to work through some crankiness. Two, three days and you're done. Then so you're on this, this trip I was on, Bart, um, down in San Eve, which I can't wait to share with you about that journey, but um, I did that, you know, but I removed also coffee during that. 14 day period there's no caffeine in the whole place i was wow. even like trying to seek it out i saw, <laughs> some, I saw they, they a, there was a companion lady there and she yeah. she was like setting up her tea and she broke it out of her purse and i, mm. and I was like i was thinking about buying like That's i didn't it. sell hey, that thing for me yeah. for hey can i bum a tea bag hey can i get that? Story that they go all in you know i had these hydroclonics and mm. in the first hydroclonic i had uh, was with they, they end it with a coffee enema Right. And so mm-hmm. I'm, I'm the long story, but I go, my first thought, like I'm three days there and I'm feeling it. Let me tell you, when they say prepare, yeah, like start cutting back on these things. What does Bobby do before he gets there? I go, I'm going deeper. In the, <laughs> I'm going in the deep end of the pool. So I'm drinking four or five cups a day. I'm eating pretty crappy because I know what's about to happen. I, I just really didn't take care of myself before I got there. Oh, yeah. So when that coffee and I started, I, I said, uh, is, there, is that caffeinated? <laughs> I get my caffeine any way I need to. Any way I, I, mean, I was really anyway. curious because I know I've heard you can – get drunk that way like yeah, they wow. people do that like <laughs> off of liquor and i was like am i gonna get a buzz off this coffee because wow. i had a headache for i would say you said two three days i would say i was in a lot of discomfort for five well that's a different one caffeine's a different that's a different neural oh, path right? i would did both you know and you were doing um, sugar and caffeine at the same time right bobby <laughs> you were like, yeah you know and it's funny i'll tell you what helped me through it i will i will i met some crazy i met a guy that was drinking 12 well he he, he got there he was smoking three packs of cigarettes a day mm. and and he was drinking him and his son a gallon of milk a day not organic milk that's a whole nother topic well for another day uh and 12 to to 14 um mountain dews a day and then and then he goes he was a good old country boy he goes well and on top of that thursday friday and saturday i'll easily drink a 12 pack of Heine. on top i'm like (laughs) and i'm the one with the kidney problem what the heck you know um i'm feeling inflamed but my point of that is is like just watching what he was going through compared to what I was going through was like, it helped me. I was like, I got nothing, you know, I'm gonna go get yeah, in the yeah. pool. And, and you're right, Bart, it does. When you, when you get to the other side of it though, wow, what a treat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah and, that, and that's, and that's the thing. I think sometimes we often don't give ourselves enough permission mm-hmm. um, to get to the other side or give ourselves enough credit. And, and I, I started this off earlier talking about a little bit about the why it, in, in and that's a great topic and maybe we can cover it at one point, but and the, the reason I bring up the why is that, listen, just to quit sugar, to quit caffeine, to quit Mountain Dew, to quit the cigarettes, to quit because it's bad for you is never enough. Yeah, I'm in. Not enough. I'm in. You know, we have to attach it to something. It has to go deeper than that. And it's not good enough because I read a, a, an article on Dr. Google or something like that. Like we have to dig down and find out why are we pursuing this information? What are we going to do once we have the information? 
Yeah. Who's going to be around me when I have, and I start to have this information and I'm heading off into that path. Who's going to be around me to support this journey that I'm on? Who's my tribe? So as much as these technical things, you know, when I work with people in a, you know, on a daily basis in the clinic, those are the things that really, I know when, whether or not a patient is going to make a change mm -hmm. when I can help them either answer that they could answer those for me yeah. because then, it, then we don't care about letting go of the chocolate chip cookie or the cigarette. Um, because there's such a, a, a more, there's a bigger purpose behind it. And as wow. much as, yeah, and as much as I could have these conversations about food groups and sugars and, and goods and bads, none of that matters mm -hmm. as much as what do you do with that information and why do you want it? That, and that really, really, really gets down to the core of it. It's kind of a good place to wrap too, because I would guess, Bart, that, I mean, that's kind of the work you do with people, right? Like people come and you help them get through to the other side of that. Yes. Yeah. That's it in a nutshell. And, and whatever capacity you take, whether, whether it's physical, mental, chemical, emotional, spiritual, it's all real. And, and if we ignore that one category, we might not get the results that we want. And guys, I will say, I'll add real quick that um, when you, when, when I come back and I'm seeking this why and the knowledge and this food and really, really on it sincerely this time, <laughs> um, it's funny how your tribe lines up. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? They, they, even, even when they're in other states, my hmm. daughter's reaching out, hey, dad, I've been trying to eat better. And my other daughter's like, she's pregnant, by the way. I'm having a baby boy, by the way, a little grandbaby. So, uh, but she's also like, I sent her some things about things that she could eat while pregnant to make sure she's eating, keeping her blood sugar safe. Your, my son is all in it. He's looking at the labels. And prior to that, you know, they were just following the lead of dad, you know, for whatever reason. I was like, <laughs> at some point, I'm like, don't follow me. You might want to follow Bart or something. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, you're right. Your tribe does jump in and then you discover more about your why, which maybe we'll have you back one day and shoot down that path. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. I love it. This is Bart. This is thank. First of all, thank you. This is super uh, enlightening. I, you know, I love the uh, formula you gave us for the net carbs. Um, and it's always a good reminder. I find like, I think human nature, uh, with, you know, left unchecked, I think we can kind of, kind of slide on some of that stuff. Um, I know I, I have for sure. Um, so this is super encouraging. I don't feel convicted at all. I don't feel like you shamed me. <laughs> I feel like, right. I feel like you, you, you created a safe place, but you also did some educating. If people want to reach out to you, they're like, Hey, listen, I, I get it, Bart. I want to, I want help. How do people reach you? How do people work with you? Well, there's, there's two ways. If you just want to follow me and never actually really want to talk to me, you can just follow me on Facebook. <laughs> I go live every day. I'm dropping, you know, simple health tips every day. And that's at my name, Bart Precourt. Uh, you want me on Instagram, it's Dr. Bart Precourt. And then like Bobby mentioned earlier, we have a studio right here in, uh, we're, we're down by the beach today, uh, right here in Seagrove, Florida, called Balance Health Studio. Um, catch us on balance38.com. That's so good. Bobby, any last minute advice for people? Um, you know, I mean, you've just gone through this, like no sugar, no coffee thing. Any, any last, where do people start? Based um, I think that like Bart touched on, just don't overcomplicate it. You know, I think mm -hmm. we want to, and it's also the big picture of it is, is, is kind of scary when you think about it. Like I'm going to go off into this world. Um, mm -hmm. But once you begin to go through it, it's not as bad. You know, I, I said, Oh, the headache for five days. Yeah. It really, manageable. What I would say, if you take the journey though, um, you know, back to real estate or work or whatever, I would try to make sure my schedule is a little lighter. If I could throw out a tip, you know, one of the things that times I have attempted it, um, meetings or some stress or bad phone calls or whatever. And I can unconsciously start. Sure, yeah, if it's point. something healthy, I, you know, next thing I know, I ate 20 apples. Cause I, I do that. I stress eat one day. I would not, well, the, prior to going away, I was in a really weird conversation with this guy getting my butt handed to me. And I looked down and I'm eating chips. I don't even remember hmm. starting the chip process. It just, hmm. <laughs> so, wow. so maybe the, you know, we, we also try to be, you know, be conscious a little more, you know, is what I'm really trying to do is it really, what am I doing? Bart told me one time too, you know, your brain's like a dog. I mean, it, he wants a treat. My dog has walked in here three or four times and he wants a treat. He's been fed. He's already had a treat, mm -hmm. but he thinks he's hungry. Mm -hmm. And I think we think we're hungry when we're really not that hungry. Sometimes a bite of an apple is pretty good. Yeah. That's all I needed. Yeah. It's really good. Well, listen, that's all. I, I, listen, Bobby, thank you for, um, 
I know this is, we're trying like new stuff, right? Like we're not always talking about real estate. And I, but I think what some of the response you're getting on this show is that you're talking about real life. You're talking about stuff that matters. And I think that's part of, you know, when you live in a community and you pick communities like 38 to live in, I think part of that is we do that for lifestyle. We do that because the, the place we live is an expression of where, how we want to live. And I think, you know, the things we put in our mouth every day are another extension of lifestyle and self-expression. We, we want the cookie because we feel like we're strong and, and we can do what we want to do or whatever. But, but I feel like exposing or, or identifying these things that we all, I don't say we all wrestle with, but, but it's a daily thing for a lot of people thinking about the food and what, they're, what they want their body to look like, feel like. Yeah. I just, I'm glad that you bring these types of topics out for, for people. It, so. it, what does it have to do with real estate? Cause people always ask me that nothing, mm-hmm. but everything. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're going to yeah. be in this game that we're in a business and real estate and you know, you think you can get away with not taking care of yourself. Well, right. you better have Bart's number handy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. You're going to have an Humpty appointment. Dumpty. Just give Humpty it. Dumpty, yeah. I, I run into some agents real quick, but they'll, they'll, you know, they'll be killing it, crushing it. I watch them and I'm like, how, how old are you? And one guy the other day goes, I'm 28. And I went, Oh yeah, that'll be, that's why. Okay. <laughs> remember when you could just do 28 yeah whatever, nothing, and then nothing i me. did all that in 20 day. apples yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 20 apples or red, <laughs> red bull, red bull. <laughs> yeah. i met a guy the other day just doing seven of those the red bulls a day whoa yeah. that that hurts that hurts just thinking about it. Yeah. bobby listen if people want to reach out to you uh, because they love that you're this kind of a real estate agent you're the kind of real estate agent that doesn't just talk about properties all the time you think about life and important things in life um, or they just want to talk to you. They want to have coffee with you. Like, how do people reach you? Sure. Well, my number's attached, obviously. My website's 38localrealestate.com or 38localproperties.com. Mm-hmm. Or you can reach me um, by cell, which will be below. Awesome. Good stuff, gentlemen. Thanks for this. Bart, I, I like this conversation, man. I hope we get to have you back sometime when Bobby's feeling like he wants to, you know, dive deeper into uh, the Maybe why. We'll of try all. you in once a month if you're interested. Bart, with no commitment to that, obviously. But I do want to tackle that why. I, I really, I got a story to tell you and I'd love to share it with the world because it's, it's quite interesting. So we'll, yeah, pull some, so we'll do it again. Well, Bobby, I, you know, Chris, Bobby, I'd love to be back. You know, uh, Bobby, I think the world, you know, look, and I, I, I love your approach toward, you know, real estate is your thing right now, but I don't think it matters what your thing is. Uh, I love your approach of who you are and, you know, always bringing value to people. So, you know, keep doing your thing. You want me back once a month, I'm here for you, brother. Appreciate it. Thanks. Stuff, appreciate gentlemen. it. It means a lot. Right. Thanks, guys. See All right, guys. Be good.